What up everyone, OJ over here from Player Essence and welcome to my village of Nintendo Switch and gaming news PE Ninjas. Today we've got some great information for you so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the developer for Axum Verge on the Nintendo Wii U and many other platforms, Tom Happ, he still wants to bring his game to the Nintendo Switch, however it's not been approved by Nintendo of America and Nintendo of Japan at the moment. So here's what he had to say on the matter. Many fans have asked us to bring Axum Verge to Nintendo Switch. I have reached out to my old co-workers at Nintendo of America many times, but so far we haven't been approved for the platform yet. As soon as we get the green light, we'll drop everything and get right to work on the Nintendo Switch version. So yeah, I think that would be pretty good. From what I understand, this game is supposed to be like a Metroidvania style of game and many people really like it and it was done by one person. It's been out on various different platforms and it reviewed well, it sold well across those platforms. And I know the Wii U version did well, even though it was released so late into the console's life cycle. So if they can get working on a Nintendo Switch version of the game, I think that would be in everyone's best interest. Tom Happ, in addition to Nintendo, just because this game is a good game. It is a Metroidvania style of game. So I think it would fit really well for a portable platform. And I've actually been playing my Nintendo Switch in a tabletop mode with this controller in between my editing sessions. So it's actually somewhat distracting at times because even I play it during when I'm editing. So... Um, um, yeah, so I think Nintendo Switch having this type of game, I think that would be fun. That's why I'm always pushing for like Castlevania style of games, these type of titles, because I think they would work really well in portable tabletop mode for all of us editors out there. So let me know what you guys think about this game, Axum Verge, and the potential of it coming to Nintendo Switch, and would you guys double dip or buy it if it did come to the system? All right, next we've got some Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia information. So the North American teaser site is officially open. And here is a little bit of the overview and the features from the game. In Valentia, battle is waged in the traditions of Elder Fire Emblem games, when the rules of battle were simpler, yet the challenge formidable as ever. To stop the war and unify the continent, you'll have to balance the needs of an army of soldiers with unique stats. Play as iconic Fire Emblem character classes such as Mage, Paladin, and Archer, as you bring strategic skills to bear in the challenged grid-based battle system. When you encounter a dungeon on the world map, Explore every corner in action-adventure style. You'll never know what secrets you may unearth. Here are the features for the game as well. A strategic mix of modern and legacy Fire Emblem gameplay, including permanent death of characters. Explore new three dungeons in action-adventure style. Fully voiced cinematics and story dialogue conjure up a stirring tale of loss and triumph. Reimagines the Famicom classic Fire Emblem Gaiden never before released in the West. Master iconic character classes, paladins with heavy armor, airborne pegasus knights, bow wielding archers, and more. So this game is looking absolutely fantastic. What I think is going to be one of the most interesting and best additions to the Fire Emblem franchise is going to be the 3D dungeons to where you can explore them in an action adventure style. Once I saw that, I was like, whoa, this is going to be amazing. And they probably started work on this well before they could have got it on the Nintendo Switch. I'm not sure how easy it is to port from the 3DS to the Nintendo Switch. I don't think it's very easy, probably not, considering the power gap and the type of systems and engines that run on 3DS compared to the Nintendo Switch. However, we do have a brand new Fire Emblem game being developed for the Nintendo Switch, and hopefully they take some of these elements as far as the 3D dungeons, exploring in action-adventure style, and other things, and put them into that Fire Emblem game. But I will go out and put a prediction at this point. I think this Fire Emblem game is going to be probably the best-rated and best-selling Fire Emblem game of all time. Not this one, Fire Emblem Echoes on the Nintendo 3DS. That one's going to do well. But I think Fire Emblem on the Nintendo Switch, that is going to be another rebirth for the franchise, but this time on a full-blown home console that you can also take on the go with you. That's just my predictions. That's why I think that they're taking this amount of time that they're taking to really make sure that it's a 2018 title, that it can come out and it's polished. So let me know what you guys think about both of the Fire Emblem games. I know we don't have much information on the Fire Emblem for the Nintendo Switch, but I'm excited to play Gaiden in the meantime. All right, guys, and there was a story just a little bit ago that Nintendo yanked the Nintendo Switch dock off of their official site, which many believe to be because of the whole scratching issue that is going on or that some people are reporting, but apparently Nintendo says that is not the case. They basically have said that the dock has sold out on Nintendo's online storefront through stock issues, not that it was basically yanked for any type of manufactured defect or any problems like that. So here's what they had to say on the matter. So the dock wasn't pulled from the replacement slash refurbishment store. It's out of stock. As previously announced, the Nintendo Switch dock set, which includes the dock, 
HDMI cable and an AC adapter will be released spring 2017. So there you go there, and even if you follow the link, because this is from Go Nintendo, Gizmundo is reporting that as far as what Nintendo is denying, I guess based on a statement that they released there. Guys, just make sure you're really careful when you're putting your Nintendo Switch back in the dock. I'm looking at mine and I haven't had any scratches at all. Or you can also get a screen protector. You can put a soft cloth there. There is some wiggle room. So there's various ways to get around it. But yeah, just make sure you're careful when you put it back into your dock and you should be okay. Don't just slam that in there or don't have your kids put that in there because they're probably going to put it in pretty aggressively and scratch up the system. So just be careful. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Nintendo revise things a little bit with the dock going forward in the future. All right, moving on to the last article here. We're going to be about some Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and the director talks about some of the cuts to the game as far as what they had to take out moving over to Nintendo Switch and the franchise's future. So first we're going to start off with the switch from the Nintendo Wii U to the Nintendo Switch on what had to be cut out. This is according to the producer Fubayashi, it wasn't a real email but our back and forth with him followed a similar pattern. We knew about the hardware, we thought it was going to come and here it is. When it was originally just for Wii U, we had touch controls. We had to remove them. Although it was not very flashy or exciting work, it was still time consuming and difficult. We felt that the way the Sheikah Slate is represented in the game and how we use the gamepad in real life synced really well. So when we had to remove it, I did feel like, oh, it's too bad we had to do that. And because it was so tied into the scenario, we did have to go back and redesign and rethink the scenario, which was a little bit of hard work. Then Fubuyashi talked about the future of the Zelda series. Every time we put out a Zelda game, we feel like we're at the top of a mountain and this is the best Zelda game. But we realize there's a taller mountain behind that. And I feel like the minute you feel this is the tallest mountain there will ever be, and you're not being a good Zelda director. No, you guys promoted the right man, <laughs> Nintendo, <laughs> Anuma-san, Miyamoto. You guys got the right guy in it because he's always in the pursuit of getting better. He wants to make sure that the games just get better and better and better. And I love the direction. Fubuyashi has pretty much cemented himself as a legend because a lot of these ideas that are in this Zelda game, of course, it's Anuma. But Anuma is thinking about so many different things things. He's thinking about promotion. He's doing other things. Remember, Anuma is pretty much a senior official, just not at the board of directors, like at the investor meetings all the time. But he is a very senior level at Nintendo. So he has a lot of responsibilities outside of just Zelda, although he likes to portray that. So Fubuyashi, with him taking the reins of really getting in the pit and in the grunt work, so in the trenches, as you use a uh, American football analogy, in the trenches and making sure things are working when it comes to the mechanics, when it comes to the type of game and any orders that are given to him is just very, very, very time consuming. And it's incredible how he He's responded now he's worked on Zelda games before but this is his first lead role and man he has done an outstanding job not to diminish what Shigeru Miyamoto or Anuma-san had to do with this game obviously they play big roles too but like I said this guy was deep in the trenches making sure things work actually getting the orders from the above and saying oh man we have to cut this and actually getting his team to rally and making sure this game was as good as it is is just it's amazing it's amazing what Fubuyashi was able to do in his first real lead role as the Zelda director and I'm really really happy with their work because this is my favorite Zelda game of all time I think the Nintendo Switch hardware as far as what you have the different types of play styles that you have with the system in addition to the most amazing controller that I've probably ever used for a Zelda game Nintendo Switch Pro Controller it all fits so well it all fits so well with this game where you can play it how it is how it has the looting elements there's just so much and I'm not even anywhere near close to being done and I think I've put more than 30 to 40 hours into Zelda already. I'm going to be playing this game for a long time. Alright guys, let me know what you guys think about Zelda in the comment section below. Alright, that wraps it up for this video here. Go ahead and hit that like button if you did like it. Let's me know you guys want more content like this going forward in the future. And subscribe to Player Essence for the latest news, reviews, discussions, and more. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you ninjas for the next video. Peace.